time immemorial, it has been the custom among freely accepting masons, at the request of a brother or its nearest relatives, to perform the last Masonic rites over its more boy man. In conformity with that ancient and time honored custom, we have assembled to offer this tribute of our affection to the memory of the brother who has come to the end of his earthly journey and from whose grasp have dropped the working tools of life. This evening we hear in honor of our departed brother and his Masonic record is as follows. His name is Jerry Wayne Bain. He was a member of West Nashville Phoenix Lodge number 131. <clears throat> he, he was made an inter apprentice mason on May the 12th, 1983. He was made a fellow trout mason on June the 23rd, 1983. And he became a Master Mason in August 27th, 1983. And he has also had the privilege of serving our lodge in the year 1993 in his Worshipful Master of West Nashville Lodge. <clears throat> and he entered into the Celestial Lodge above on March 13th, 2018. That our hearts be comforted in our sorrow and find Strength for our labor, Brother Chaplain, you will lead us in our devotions. Remember now, thy Creator, in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars, be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and strong men shall bow themselves, and strong men and, and the grinder cease because of their abuse, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall break her off low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his own home, and the mourners go about the street. Or ever the silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Would you bow your head with me in prayer, please? <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank thee that amid all the labors and turmoil, the perplexity and the apparent confusion of life, Thou hast not left us to wander unguided and alone, but hast set up ancient landmarks to guide us on the way. Thou hast given us the great light to illuminate our paths. Thou hast placed within us the, the call of immortality, eternal life. Thou dost ever support us with thine everlasting arm, even in the dark and rough places of life. We are never forsaken nor forgotten by thee. The love always responds to the deep yearnings of our heart, and we thank thee that thou hast revealed the, revealed the truth of immortality, enabling us to look beyond the death as a transition from mortal to immortal being, with the knowledge that the grave is a thoroughfare leading into thine eternal presence, where we must have the fullness of life. So bless each of us in this time as the end has come, of life's journey, we may hear the welcome words. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. So when worthily worn, it is more old, it is more important than the order of the garter, the golden fleece, or any other order that could be conferred. And every mason ought to wear it with equal pleasure to himself and honor to the fraternity. This I deposit on the coffin of our departed brother.
By it, we were reminded of that purity of life and conduct which is necessary to obtain a medicine to the celestial lodge above, where the supreme architect of the universe presides. This evergreen, reminding us of that which once temporarily marked the place of the luster's dead, is an emblem of our faith in the immortality of the soul. And though, like our brother, each of us one day may be clothed in the ceremonies of death and deposited in a silent tomb, yet through our faith in the mercy of God, we may trust his infallible word that our redeemed spirit shall live eternally in that glorious realm where death, suffering, and death will come no more forever. This tube I deposit on the coffin. We shall live again. To you, the immediate relatives and families, all heartbroken at the loss we have all sustained, we have biting consolation to offer. We sincerely, deeply, and most affectionately sympathize with you in your bereavement, reminding you that who even tempers the wind to the shorn lamb looks with infinite compassion on you in this hour, and that he will surely fold the arms of love and protection around you who put your trust in him. We also bid you look for a day of glad reunion. For it cannot be, my friends, that earth is man's only abiding place. It cannot be that human life is only a bubble cast up by the ocean of time to float a moment on its troubled waters and then vanish in darkness and oblivion. Else, why are noblest aspirations of our souls unsatisfied? Man is sure born for a higher destiny than that of earth. There must be, there is, a place when our loved ones taken from us by death can be in our presence forever. Yes, my friends, the Holy Bible draws aside the black curtain that drapes the tomb and bids us turn our eyes with faith and confidence on the opening scenes of a grand eternity. So from here on and here out, may only the sweet voice of brotherly love speak for him whose voice is hushed forever. Brother Chaplin, you will lead us in our benediction. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord makes his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. Oh,